the deck is finished we're gonna have a look around it here in a little bit and see what we got going on um, we're gonna talk about money how much it costs um, things that maybe I wish I would have done a little different and we're just gonna take a good overall look at everything hi everybody I'm Jim Deardorff and this is Detroit DIY I hope these videos these tutorials have helped you build confidence to do your own projects um, that's my goal is to get people who think they can do it but they're not sure the motivation the the thought process and the confidence to go out and do these jobs let's get a look at what's going on all right guys a little bit of a bad hair day some pandemic hair some wind <laughs> makes for a mess so i called for my final inspection and um as you know we we were approved for our rough and also been approved on our final so he was okay with um, some of the things that I did that weren't really in the drawing that I did a little bit different or that I had to do different. So we're all good to go. Now we're going to talk about money real quick. So I bought my lumber here local at Bernard's Lumber Yard. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Not Menard's, Menard's. And it was $3,109 and some change. I'm hopeful you can see that. So that was the main frame that was all my posts my two by fours my balusters or spindles um, so i did wind up a little bit short on two by fours i had to purchase 10 more um, mainly because i changed the walkway last minute it was going to go out and around the tree and instead i went between the cottage and the tree so i subtracted some two by fours just at a guess um, made me about 10 short which was no big deal and i was 40 spindles short uh, maybe 10 decking boards so some of the stuff um, you know no big deal hardware shortage of lumber was about 1200 bucks that's including my ledger board anchors the epoxy the screens everything to do with the ledger board so guys we are right at 4300 bucks 4400 bucks to build this deck so let's take a look at the finished project this is what it looks like from the lake side i did put in 10 yards of fill to get my stairs and everything there so i could pass inspection i'd like to put some more so that the transition is a little bit smoother um, probably another 10 or 12 yards and i need to fix up my lake bank a little bit but you can get a a good view of of what we got going on let's take a closer look at these stairs they turned out absolutely awesome i think the whole deck turned out absolutely awesome so i'm i really like that i really like the wood and i am going to treat this wood with um a water seal like a thompson's water seal or something like that in the in the spring and uh, then i'll do that once or twice a year and uh it should stay just nice looking for a long time our cut out around the tree we'll take a look at that from on the deck in a minute and the remaining part of the walkway I still need to update the front porch area to match the rest of the deck so that 2x4 right there will get turned the other way and then some spindles or balusters will get added to the railing and then that brown piece right there will get replaced completely so we still have a little bit to do there but no big deal here's the view from the other side yep we still have some more painting to do we're going to take care of that in a couple of days here now what i still need to do i have this bracing on here and this is this is temporary this one and that one i need to put um the six by sixes in their place just like this however with the pricing of the lumber right now i'm just going to wait till spring it's no big deal it's braced it's not going anywhere so i'm i'm pretty happy with that and then the same thing over here on this side i still need to put my six by sixes here and right there but it's braced good and i'm happy with it let's take a look up top so i connected the walkway to my front porch my original 
thought process or drawings was for the walkway to head out this way, jog in around the tree and come back around. Um, upon thinking about it a little bit, I decided to go this way. This narrow area right here is an up was a concern of mine also about passing inspection, but he was okay with it. So if he's okay with it. I'm okay with it because it's plenty wide enough to get through. I like the look of the railing from the inside and I like the look of the railing from the outside. My transitions turned out well. Everything looks really good. I did have to put a little notch in my railing down here on the stairs for my post. I wasn't really expecting to do that. I thought it would clear, um, it's, but it does not. So anyway, no big deal. It is what it is. And then all the railing in here so I did have to make one change and I'll show you that or talk about that here in one second so this railing right here was a little wiggly and I had to put in some additional bridging underneath at the base of the post there and over there and the reason for that was the joist was actually flexing back and forth when you pushed on the rail so to firm up the joist i went underneath and put some bridging in so as you can see if you push on it now it's nice and firm so we'll go take a look at that and then we'll talk about things that i wish i maybe would have done different so right here is the bottom of that railing post and this is the bridging that I installed just to tie this joist to this joist to help stop the flexing and, and it did. Um, the other piece of bridging is right here but it's so close to this support post that it's not going to flex right there anyway. And then I did the same thing with this post. I installed another piece of bridging right here just to stiffen that railing up. So, And it did a wonderful job doing so. All right, guys, so here's the first thing that I wish, I don't know that I can really say I had done different, but paid more attention to. Um, I know I put my tubes in nice and straight off of the string, and there's nothing wrong with this, that it's not exactly center. Um, but the problem here was my tube wasn't perfectly level. I kind of knew that going in. Um, and because it wasn't level, obviously the top had shifted out a little bit. Um, and, and I wish that was more center. It's not the end of the world. Maybe it's a little OCD. I don't know. And this one kind of wound up a little bit to one side. And like I say, it's no big deal. It's not a deal breaker or anything. Just wish I would have uh, stuck a level in those tubes and made sure that they were squared up really nice. All right, guys, here's number two. I wish I would have put my ducking boards slightly closer together because as you can see acorns are a huge issue for me and these acorn caps are kind of getting stuck in there they're they're hard to get out this one's wedged in there pretty good in fact I'll probably have to get something and knock it out of there that's how good it's stuck in there so it wouldn't have bothered me if we had put them just a little bit tighter so that them guys couldn't get in there like they do or maybe a little further apart so they could fall through but the um i didn't think about the acorns in the beginning until they started falling but there's a acorn cap stuck in the in between the boards all over the place so i'll have to devise me a little way to uh get them picked out of there no big deal but just maybe one thing that I, I could have or wished I would have done a little different. So the only other thing I wish I would have done different is, is used all the same uh, brand decking screws. I wish I could have got my hands on the deck mates. Was it possible because of the pandemic they were just sold out and they weren't coming. I had to use so many multiple brands 
um, and I discovered the one brand wasn't wasn't very the coating wasn't uh, what I expected it to be I'll probably do a review video on those ducking screws in a couple two three weeks here and uh, and show you guys what I discovered with those screws see if maybe I just got a bad batch or if they do it every time I'll go pick up a couple of boxes and uh, of each of the screws and and we'll run them through their paces and see what happens otherwise guys I'm pretty happy with everything I paid a lot of attention to detail because details are where it's at it's the little stuff that you know a mistake here a mistake there it's the little stuff that really stands out and people notice not that there's no mistakes here um, there are a few but no one's ever gonna notice them and I'm the last one that's gonna point them out it's just not how I operate when I build something I'm not gonna point them out because no one's ever gonna see it no one's ever gonna notice so and that's the main thing when you're doing this stuff yourself the, the important things make sure you pay a lot of attention to the important things the ledger boards the upright posts the railings um, so on and so forth any little mistake in a cut or a measurement here or there no one's really going to notice there's always a way around it and always a way to fix it um, to the best that you can and, and no one will ever know that you didn't plan it that way so um, keep that in mind when you're working on your own stuff guys and and uh, this has been a great project a great run I'm glad I could share it with all of you and like I say, I hope it gives you the confidence to get out there and get it done. I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to give a special thanks to Tony Iconelli and Brett Wimmer because none of this could happen without them. And oh yeah, click on one of those two videos right there and help me out. Thanks.